it doesn't seem like well over half a year ago that we were talking about how we got on in the Dublin Marathon. Yet, if you listen to this podcast in a day it's released on a Monday, it is exactly, it's the start of a 16-week training plan leading up to the Dublin Marathon already. And like, my, my mind's blown that it's it's already only 16 weeks away from Dublin. So we, we put out a story of, di- of different guests and stuff. We're definitely looking to have more guests to the podcast next couple of weeks. But one of the questions was, hey, 16 weeks is coming up for the Dublin City Marathon. We love to talk about that. And it's like, that's a very time-specific thing to talk about. So the only time we could really do it, it, it this is pretty much the last week we can talk about 16-week training plan. And I know, Eric, you're famous for your four-and-a-half-week training plan for the Dublin Marathon last year. So let's let, let's get into 16 weeks. <laughs> yeah, so first things first, don't do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> it that, that, a whole lot of stupid and grit to do what I did, but um, 16 weeks seems like a long time. But when you mm. enter into a training plan, now a couple of people asked us, How can you give us a 16 week training plan? We absolutely could, but we haven't got the time. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you get a coach, a coach should be there to kick mm. you on. And that's why we stepped away from the training, just because our other bits and pieces are keeping us so busy in our own training. And it's unfair on people to do so. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about some of the key mistakes we've made, some of the key points you could be considering. And bridging off what we said in the intro, it's not about running the marathon next week. It's about running the marathon in 16 weeks. And you're going to have to bite the bullet probably for the first four weeks and introduce yourself to some slow running. And that is that is some important information we need to get. I don't know how many people have chatted over the last couple of weeks and we've talked about running and like, I just go out and run as hard as I can. And then I do that three times yeah. a week, but I don't, I can't run a sub two hour marathon. And it, this goes back to when we started this podcast, there was four clowns who hadn't a clue about running, who yeah. were all going to do a different method. And I went with the heart rate training and I was running at eight minute kilometers an hour and you were all laughing at me. Yeah. And I ended up doing a marathon two, three hours or well, we did a what five. I can't even remember what we did our first one in, but it went from a five hour there thereabouts to a, a 330. So or 335 by following heart rate training. And so it's trying to get that point across that when we talk about these topics, when we talk about the different types of training sessions, just understand some of them are going to be frustrating. Yep. Some of them are going to feel really hard and they're supposed to feel really hard, but they're not supposed to be hard all of the time. And like we just mentioned, what a coach has told me and has reminded me is, Eric, you can't go 100% all the time. Mm-hmm. You need to let the body recover in order to get to get better. And I had a good discussion with Lorcan Fisher on this, and he put it perfectly for me. And he, I don't know where he picked it up from. But when you're doing something like a marathon, you need to think of your aerobic base. So yeah. think of your fitness like a pyramid, okay? So when you keep your heart rate low and you're running in zone two, and you're going to hear us talking about these heart rate zones, and if you haven't got a heart rate monitor, Zone two is your conversational pace. You should be able to have a chit chat with the person beside you and everything above that increases with a gradient up to your zone four, zone five, where you don't want to even talk to yourself. So when you build that base, the base of your pyramid is your zone two. The more time you can spend in that, the better your aerobic base gets, Mm. the better cardiac management you get. So the builder, the bigger you build that base of the pyramid, then you can have bigger blocks on top of that. And that is where your pace and your effort gets better. So when you have, if you have no aerobic base, think of the size of that pyramid. It can only be built so high. And that's what you need to think about. As frustrating as it is to be running at a seven minute kilometer, think of the foundation that you're giving yourself. So on the day you want to go fast, instead of running for five minutes at the max all out pace, now we're all of a sudden up to 45 minutes. Now we're up to an hour at the pace you want to do that you didn't think you could do. And it's all about building that base. So that's just one of the basics I want to get out of the way early. And then we're going to talk about some of the different training sessions, Sean, and wheel back and forth about some of the mistakes we've made. Yeah. And again, this will probably spur a lot of questions from people, but hopefully it gives people some sort of knowledge on how to take this. Piggybacking off that, I suppose, would be um, what's your starting point for 16 weeks? Ideally, you'd be able to, to, to jog uh, you know, maybe 5, 6K at that stage. But whether you are or not, I mean, 
what you're talking about there, Eric, is build up your aerobic base. But what you're not saying is get long runs in five days a week. You got to slowly build up that volume and stuff as well. Otherwise, you keep paying the payments. And let's say you've done very little running to now. Don't be thinking, hey, if I just do slow runs, I can go out five times a week and go for an hour plus each time. That's that's going to lead down towards injury as well. I suppose when you talk about aerobic base, the, the, the most important run of the week is that long run on the week well usually for most people on the weekend yeah absolutely and and one of the key things like for me the biggest mind-blowing part of it is oh my god it's so boring it's so mm. slow what i've started to do on my longer runs and on my longer cycles is when i start to see a cardiac drift so when i'm running at a 615 and i'm holding 136 136 137 138 139 i hit the lap and then I slow down. So then I'm beginning to see how long was my body able to maintain that heart rate? And it was only four minutes before I ended up in the 140s. But then when I slowed down to the 6.30 pace, oh, I was 11 minutes there before my, it started to drift. Built again. And what I what I've built myself up to over four weeks is a 10 mile after a 180 kilometer cycle, all with my heart rate under 140 beats per minute at a 6.10 pace. There was no change in pace. No, I walked up every steep hill because mm. I'm not stupid. It's all about keeping the heart rate in that zone. It wasn't to run up the hill because I'm a hero and then have a heart rate of 170. But so that's the you first four to, weeks. But that's four weeks yeah. of being severely frustrated with how slow I had to run. Mm. Um, so it just shows you the patience you need. Yeah, they say that the long run, we've talked before on the podcast, somewhere between 25 to 30% of your of your overall weekly mileage. So a couple of smaller runs, especially in that first week, and then having that that long one at the end, maybe three to four weeks. Well, it depends. If you're running five times a week right now, there's no reason you can't to start this. But if you're only running one or two, not to do it. But it's it's funny you go back to um what we talked about back all those years ago, I was more of that strength training kind of person for, for, for the marathon. And it probably served to do more injuries because you will hear a lot of cross training and stuff now, but as much as I love my strength training, as, as much as I love my gym work, I think the worst thing you could do right now is add a load of volume with running and then start adding a load of volume to the gym and doing exercise not used to, or going heavier and used to like, it's almost maintenance of gym work right now, like or, or a small bit of uh, improvement there. But if you start doing, like I've never done barbell back squats before, you start loading yourself up doing that, and then you're doing the runs and all the rest, it, it could be a bit dicey. But if you've built yourself up right now to do a lot of strength training, you could probably still keep that going as well. Yeah, 100%. It's just, it's one thing, depending on, on what your motivation is, weights do complement running. Mm. but you're not going high weight, low rep. You're going low weight, higher rep. Um, you might correct me, Sean, but for me, it's about maintenance. It's about stability. It's about mm. core strength. It's about functional movement. It's not about benching 400 kilos. No, absolutely not. So the game is to run a marathon and be injury free. So when you're adding in, so we'll talk about elements of cross training. So, I suppose to put some structure on it, let's start week one. We're planning. Me and you are sitting here, Sean, and we're saying, right, what's our level? And this is where you have to be honest. Am I a beginner? Am I slightly intermediate? Or am I an advanced runner? If you're a beginner, you're looking at about three runs a week. Three runs a week with a little bit of extra. So maybe a swim or a cycle, or maybe a little bit of yoga or conditioning work added on top of your three runs a week. You're doing a marathon. You might not do it in a sub four. You might not do it in three and a half. It depends on your base. But three runs a week will get you through a marathon as long as you're consistent for 16 weeks. Intermediate guys, you want to be thinking about five runs a week. If you're trying to get under that three and a half, you're looking at about five, five runs a week and then other sessions. And then if you're going expert and you're trying to get under three hours, you could see up to seven runs a week. And that's very managed training. Sometimes you're going to be doing two a days. That sounds scary, but last week I had four two a day training sessions because of the sport I'm trying to do. So it is doable once you manage the runs that you're doing on certain days. Once again, you've also built yourself up and with the seven day five five day challenge now before getting those two days. I mean, if you're going now 16 weeks and you haven't built yourself up at all, you're like three three hour marathon. You you want to start 
because really, really considering that, because you might no, just look, start burning yourself by doing too much too fast. And these are broad strokes. You yes. might be between beginner and intermediate. So maybe you're a four run a week kind of person. Maybe you're a three week, three runs a week until maybe the fourth week when you develop mm-hmm. your confidence. And you might end on five runs a week in the build up. So it's everything is fluid and dependent on you, but it is important to be realistic with your base, realistic yes. with your goal. And what I would advise anyone in the first six weeks. Do not set a marathon goal. Set a consistency goal. You say you're going to run three times a week. You get out three times a week. Then when you're consistent, you've trained a little. The body is going to tell you Mm. where and where where you are. You know, you're you're going to say, you know what? I have the confidence now to say a four hour marathon. And the reason I say that is I have said, I am going to do a four hour margin and then I miss a few training sessions and then the pressure is on me to do it. But at least if I focus on consistency, because it's a lifestyle change, a marathon training, and it's what we forget, John, and it's, we, I, I do it, right. we go up and we do it. We forget it's a lifestyle change, but we now live this life. So we don't notice it anymore. But from, from going to your first marathon, maybe your second marathon, or maybe you're just getting back into it. Again, it's a lifestyle change. It, you have to include these training sessions around your kids, your partners, uh, work and, and be consistent. And it's, it's developing that timetable over the next 16 weeks for yourself in order to achieve good goals. Yeah, and, and it is a little bit, we will be talking about different things because it is a bit individual. For example, we've got similar fast marathon times that are cross training be different. For example, Eric does more yoga and swimming type stuff, whereas I like to live in the gym as well as work there. But um, it's interesting you talk about not setting goals and marathon pace the first six weeks. I think one way to slowly introduce speed would be a bit of strides and stuff at the end for 20 seconds and just little bits of that. Um, when, when you were doing 3, 335 or 334, I think got for, for your fast marathon, when did you start um, thinking about marathon pace and did you put in marathon pace in your, in your training when you did it? No, for me, no, you can go for it. My, my entire marathon training was based off a of heart rate. And the pace that I was going to do was set probably around six weeks before when I did a long run and I was running at a 420 pace with a heart rate of 140. So that was dictating to me what I was capable of doing. So the ideal for me was if I can maintain the 140 heart rate, 150 through the half marathon, that would be my marathon pace so as to not blow up. So that's where I was looking at 430 was where my marathon pace was. So I was looking for the 320-ish. And it did blow up because I I picked up an injury with five weeks to go in the knee and it wasn't really going away, wasn't really training. And sure enough, blew up at the 35k Mm. mark. And then ran like Forrest Gump just to maintain the <laughs> 35. So um, <laughs> Forrest Gump with the braces on, not the athletic Forrest Gump. But, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just something that I would recommend. Consistency is king. And if you can set your goal as being consistent through the first half of this, your confidence, your body, your, and that's where that little bit of aggression comes in. So if you set that goal and you go out with that goal, you need to be aggressive to achieve that goal. Because through 18 miles, that's where aggression needs to come in to get that goal. Um, so that's why I let the body kind of dictate. And then you won't be disappointed because you will, you will know roughly where you are. Because it's just a number. Before you actually commit to any training, yeah. it is just a number. Time is something that happens. Getting to the start line is important. Getting to the finish line is more important. And time is just something that happens in the middle. But if, if you can do that comfortably, you'll really, really impress yourself with how quickly you can do a marathon. It was your first marathon, even though we didn't do it, we paid the price. I would recommend not having a marathon time. And I know listening to this, if it's your first marathon time, you will have a marathon time. But getting out of there, you probably shouldn't have a marathon time. Um, but moving on to something a, a little bit different, and I want to focus on, on the heart rate training for you because you've been more successful with this one. Um, when or if did you start introducing more hills, considering like Dublin's not the flattest, flattest course? And I've known before when I hang on enough training in, what really got me was the hills. So I, I know you talked about the first four weeks, you went more off heart rate. Was there a time where you're like, okay, this one session week, I either went, I t- tackled the hills 
or did you tackle more intervals one time a week to work on your speed work? Um, or was it just strides at the end of runs? Or what, what, what way did you tackle that? I know myself, I did one interval session a week and everywhere around here is, is hills for me. So as we've just said, you don't want to go into that high, high intensity stuff in the first four weeks yeah. because it's frustrating, particularly if you're basing yourself off heart rate zones. You'll end up walking up hills and running the flats until you condition the body what you eventually move on in so let's say week one to four let's talk week one right week yep. one i find it really hard because sunday is always and this is why everyone's going to be like week one why are you starting with this start week one with a yoga mat huh. week, yeah start on the monday with yoga learn how to stretch get a good follow along i use yoga with adrian on youtube and i do her running yoga and it is a phenomenal stretch but what's that going to start to embody is after you do a long run on a Sunday, now your Monday is dedicated yoga day and it's a bit of a recovery day. And now all of a sudden you have the habit of Monday night yoga. If we go then Tuesday, I always use that as they're back into the week run. So that's my zone two run 30, 40 minutes and then a little bit of a cool down and stretch. Sometimes at the end of those long runs, I will practice strides just okay. to practice opening out the legs it's not high effort sprints strides are not sprints it's about working your gait working to run like an athlete it's about getting your cadence up but it's not effort it's not effort 10 seconds maximum maybe do it three or four times it's just to remind the body that you can run faster um so wednesday hump day always for me always intervals yeah i'm the same i don't know why <laughs> is, is so, it midweek to avoid the long run at the end and get a further away from that or what's going yeah, on there because i'm the yeah. same when's the interval day for me for as long as i remember doing well when i'm on track doing my runs so you don't want to put two hard runs together and saturday is usually my second hard run so wednesday is is far enough away from saturday and then okay. sunday you always want to be running on slightly tired legs on sunday so this is again intermediate we're talking about five runs so when we're running on the intervals for me you can do these on time or you can do them on distance for me initially i think distance is a great way to do it because it's very very easily measured it'll be over in 400 meters and you'll be annoyed at yourself because it's only 400 meters but what you're aiming to do is get your heart rate into zone four. For me, that's up in the 170s. So you have to imagine you're coming from a rest, heart rate 125. You need to push so hard to get to 170 within 400 meters. When you hit the 400 meters, it says run for 90 seconds in most training plans. I yeah. walk. I try and get that heart rate down as quickly as possible. So you want okay. to... Think of it like a spike. You want to get up to that threshold and drop it straight off. So what I do for the 90 seconds is I'll walk for the minute and then I'll jog for the 30 seconds to get the heart rate up to that 136, 140. And then I'm nearly ready to start the sprint then. Um, so initially week one, six by 400, six by 200. But if you're going six by 400, they say 90 seconds rest. If you need two minutes, take two minutes. Yeah. The importance is the ability to get through the six at roughly the same finish time. So for 400 meters, it should take you, depending on your ability, either one minute, 25, 135, two minutes, whatever it takes you, it takes you. But that's the consistency. You will notice that build over a couple of weeks. You can add in another 100 meters or you can add in another rep. So there's two ways to up that over a couple of weeks. But Wednesdays for me is always intervals. It's the middle of the week. It's horrific. And you just have to get through it. You were saying there that you have to be uh, at similar times. Uh, um, by that, you're, you're talking about as well, um, the first two or three feeling relatively easy, not easy, but not manageable. Easy. But yeah. the last three being like, you know you're going to finish, but you have to dig deep to finish, but you yeah. still want similar times as opposed to like uh, 
you know, the first interval is done, let's say 40 seconds, and then it's 42, and then it's 44, and all of a sudden it's 50 seconds. Yeah. And the last one, you're walking in there at the end, it's a one minute 20, you went from 40 to that, which you don't want, you want to even kind of pace rather than feel like you're, you're, you're teaching yourself to quit then if you're going too fast to start and you can't finish those six yeah. or whatever and it is. When you get to the third one, the best way I always describe this is first one, you're like, yeah, I'm an animal. Second one, you're like, oh, I'm a bit tired. The third one, right. you should regret that you chose to do six. So <laughs> you should already begin to lose count and start to go, was this number three or tell me this is number five? And then it's, it is a case of holding on. And mm. but you have to just trust you've had two minutes recovery. Your heart rate is low. Tell yourself all these things. Now it's time to go back to zone four. And then bang, you do it again and you hold on. And you do need to be aggressive with yourself. You have to be aggressive. Katie sat here one night with me on the bike and I was doing a hard session and she heard me calling myself all sorts of names. Come on, you fat. <laughs> yeah. uh, everything was thrown at myself. She was like, who are you talking to? I was like, what? What are you on about? So like, you're just shouting. I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't even remember. But you have to have that aggression. Otherwise, you're going to give up. You're going to give up every time. But I was, that's intervals. That is intervals. Yeah, I was in the gym today uh, work, working on a uh, person doing, they're going for PB on their, on their bench press as many as they can. And they're like, F this, I'm and that. And I was like, gee, okay, fair enough. And then there's like, at the end of the night, I said, Cam, like, have you ever seen Mythbusters? It's like, I, I know of the show. Why? He said, like, it was, it's statistically proven that if you properly curse, you can get an extra 20% more effort than if you just like frick this or yeah. um, that. Like, if you get a proper curse out of it, and it made sense to me straight away because, like you said, it's pretty much you, you saying it more eloquently, getting more aggressive with yourself and just going with it. And um, even saying that, I feel more fired, fired up doing that as opposed to just my, sometimes with those intervals, it, it's go time because you've had most of your sessions during the week where you're like slowing it down, steady pace. Now that's your, that chance to get fired up and, 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 and really go half a letter on it. Yeah, I oh, know, 100%. And that's, uh, to be honest, I even forget some of the names I call myself, but it gets me through it. <laughs> It gets me through. Don't think you got thick skin. <laughs> yeah, I hate myself. <laughs> but um, but that's that's Wednesdays. It's always Wednesdays. And then as you move from your six reps up to eight reps, your two minutes might rest, might turn into 90 seconds rest. You may then double it. You may go 800 meters and take your 90 second rest. Once you get to about a kilometer reps, you need to start switching intervals for time. So then right. it would be 10 minutes zone two running into 10 minutes zone four running. Now, as you progress through the weeks, you're now building yourself up to the PBs. Do you get me? Yeah. So instead of just running to the interval till you stop, now it's a time game. Now you're just running till how long is left? 10 minutes. It's a different animal, but that's how it progresses for me. Are you starting to notice this stage? This is, this is further on with time. So you're probably about six, eight weeks down the road at this stage. Are you starting to look at your, your 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 zone four for ten minutes and thinking, what this pace I'm holding here is this near Martin pace, this faster Martin pace, slower Martin pace, or are you not even taking that far yet? Are you still waiting six no. weeks out. I just set the watch to the zone and I try and keep it in the zone. And what I found towards the latter end, when you stick to the heart rate training, I cannot get into zone four for all the effort in the world. So if I'm doing a ten minute interval, it probably won't come into zone four until I get through six minutes and I'm running at a 350 and I'm like, I actually can't keep this pace. My body is like, what the hell? So because I'm not used to running that fast, you know, I'm yeah. not a fast person. Um, I don't have an athletic runner's gait. Like it, it's just growling and spitting. But when you get fitter, when you stick with the heart rate training, it gets really hard to get into that zone four. And that's the beauty of it. That's 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 the magic point. That's where you want to go. So every time I've done it, I've talked about a, a marathon on this. Uh, pretty much from the get go, I, I I've set a a a time. For example, I haven't set one for Dublin this year for for loads of reasons. We've got a different podcast about. But like last year, the goal was was the three thirty and everything built around the three thirty. And before it was always trying to break four and stuff like that. But the heart rate training, did the year you did did three thirty five, and I'm probably answered your question already. But like. Like you're probably one of the fittest I've ever seen you because you did all the triathlon stuff. But how, what motivated you to do the marathon when you didn't know that end goal until 
six weeks out and you're 16 weeks out training for it. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, what was what was your motivating drive to get out there in days you didn't want to get out there? Um, what was the motivator? Um, I suppose knowing people doing it as well, Ozzy was going for it as well. Um, so knowing that someone else was in the hurt locker too. And they were going to go a fast time. Like, you, you probably yeah, had an idea yeah. what they were going at. So would you, yeah. you would have a rough ballpark at that stage? Even, um, no? Yeah, but it, even even halfway, I was like, I'm cruising. I am yeah. I am doing well. I was going out on the weekend and running 11Ks at a 4.10. You know, like was it, it that, was, that feeling better was kind yeah. of motivating to keep going rather than, than just the end yeah. goal? Interesting. Yeah, it was. Probably a better way of looking at it than, than why it I did was it. The fact, I remember it, it was in Fairy House Racecourse, and they used to let people run around Fairy House Racecourse. The inside track was a 2.4K loop. And right. I was there doing a 16K, and it was zone four pretty much um and it ended up being 16k but as i said zone four was really hard to get into i think i was running at a 415 or a 411 411 was the pace i remember it and one guy was out for a walk with his dog usually people do one lap and they leave it he went for a second lap but he seen me go through eight nine laps and every time that pace was still a 411 and he was like jesus christ fair play to you there <laughs> 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 but it was at that point i was like jesus like this, some. there is something here like the, there's there's the potential to do forget about this four hour there's a potential to go so three and a half and that was the first realization apart from that it was just enjoying that journey of being that fit and mm. um, having a resting heart rate of 42 or something it was absolutely ridiculous um so it was that that motivated me for doing it I know people want a time goal, but consistency goal should be your best friend. If you right. don't let yourself down each week, it's far more important than thinking of a time. And then your your heart rate, when you do your half marathon on the 23rd of September, like I will do, it's my birthday, by the way, big way to celebrate, we'll do a half marathon. And um, that, that will dictate. If you are going your best effort for the half marathon plus 10%, so your best effort less a bit, that will give you the confidence and not only that will give you the best guide for your marathon time so if you think your marathon's pace is going to be a five minute pace you do your half marathon at a 450 and you see how bad you are crossing through that halfway mark and see how you're fixed if that wasn't a bother to you maybe 450 is your marathon pace mm. so do you get what i'm saying you'll yeah. your your body will tell at the appropriate times and and the 23rd of september dublin half marathon is a great guide and only after that day should people start going here's what i'm about this is okay. my goal that's fair yeah that's fair yeah. I, just i've never asked you this uh, i don't know why um on martin day or half martin day your, your build-ups i know you look at heart rate um are you staying? Because are you staying in zone four? Rest, rest right through. Or what? Okay, I'm pretty much in zone five from the get go, and I'm there for three and a half hours, which makes no sense. But I, I know looking at my, my heart rate, it, it's slightly different to, to the way yours is. It's like ninety percent max effort. Um, like those that have my zone belts, it's in the red pretty much the whole way through. Uh, which is pretty much zone five. What's your heart rate when when you're doing or when you did the the three thirty four um Martin? Was it slowly building or is it kind of like, yeah, look, yeah, I does, know how I feel and that's it? It does slowly build. And again, what I want people to think is the two principles, the aerobic and anaerobic. And, and if people don't know what anaerobic is, just mm. remember it has an N and you can't do it for very long. So I say N means not very long. So they reckon you've got 90 minutes of maximum effort before the body burns out of all the energy it has stored. And that's when you're, you're really into your cramps, your this and your that. Don't get me wrong, some people have phenomenal ability. They can sit in that 170 like you all day because that's all you're used to and you just get by and grin and bear it. But for me, I'm a much better athlete than Sean. No, um, <laughs> for me, it's, um, it's, it's about managing that. Um, yeah. And if I know I'm at a 150 heart rate coming through the half, I know I can do a negative split. I know I can go faster in the second half because I can allow it now to creep up because I've only got two hours to go. So then that's that's the important part for me. For me, I'm always more weary of the blowing up mm -hmm. than I am uh, of the time. So if I know I'm keeping it comfortable, even 160 through the half, I'm there, thereabouts, and then I'm happy to go into the push zone. 
Um, and now Cork was different. I hit 190 through the half. So that was a very big difference into yeah. heart rate management, you know, like, so I hadn't got the fitness to do it for a start and the heat didn't help. But it's just one thing to consider with your heart rate management. And you will notice, remember I said about pressing the lap every time yeah. your heart rate, you lose the run of it. If you monitor that through your training, you will understand what level you can go to when, if you know you've done 20 minutes in zone four and never got longer than 20 minutes before it went to zone five. Okay, you know, fair. Do you get me? So yeah. but you, can, you can start to see and each of these things are building confidence. Right. So when you come through 30K and you see 155 heart rate, you have no excuse. So right. you should be checking in and saying, I'm not working hard. I'm not sore. I'm just feeling sorry for myself. Yeah. Get rolling. And th these are all little things that just make you do what you don't want to do. <laughs> and that's a check in. I do it myself. It's a heart rate's fine. Mechanically, I'm fine. Stop complaining. Get on with it. Look at the road. Look at the corner. Just keep going. Follow the balloon. Stop thinking about it. You're not tired. Look at your heart rate. Yeah. And take a deep breath in through the nose. Nasal breathing brings your heart rate down five or six beats. If, if you're starting to see a drift on you, you're panicking. Take a few nasal breaths. I notice when mm. you breathe in deeply through the nose, not through the mouth, through the nose, it calms down that that nervous system. Um, to just bring it down a couple of beats so you can manage that zone a little bit more. Um, so you're you're just trying to scrape the extra energy you're, you're trying to just store all that energy now look different strokes for different folks but this is this is this is what i work with and stick to yeah you it, it's my like a couple minutes ago you're talking about having your need feels like calling yourself all sorts of names there but your practice uh, described there was just that positive affirmations and having things that have like don't, don't go through the hurt locker through different runs and all these weeks and just being like building yourself up on marathon day like hey i've actually been through this before and having that that um visualization i suppose that we're looking for of, of getting through the finish line and knowing where you are at different stages but what are we doing friday Oh, you skipped Thursday, Sean. No, he said Thursday. Did I say Thursday? <laughs> no, Wednesdays was Wednesday interval. Wednesday interval. Oh, we're back. We're back to yeah, Thursday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm keeping you in check. Thursday, <laughs> this is where, now again, we're talking about intermediates or possibly the beginners, depending on what, what way you space out your runs. Stop running on Thursday. Pick something else. Okay. Running is boring. Maybe <laughs> go for a cycle. Maybe do some weights. Maybe go for a swim. 16 weeks of doing nothing but running is so boring. But someone tell the man we're doing a running podcast. <laughs> I have mentioned you want to swim. Why? No impact. You're still working your on twos. You're elongating muscles. You're getting a bit of a stretch. You're taking the weight off the body. You're doing something different going to do work on your stability work you're working on the muscles you're working from the ankles into the calves into the quads you're working on your stretching or you're getting on the bike because you want to just keep the heart rate in 130 very hard to get the heart rate up on a bike on an easy effort you're building remember the pyramid we talked about yeah you're building the pyramid but you're taking the pressure off the knees off the ankles off the quads off everything else sorry not quads you're cycling but you're taking that impact off mm. training and that's the important thing so we call it cross train i'd be doing 45 minutes something different just something yeah. to keep it interesting and it can be anything it can be weights it can be a swim it can be a cycle um if you're looking to really build the aerobic base i'd go swim cycle if you're looking to build stability and injury prevention i'd be looking at prehab work weight stability work i'm not going in on the bench I'm foam rolling. I'm doing lunges without weights initially over the first couple of weeks. I'm doing YWTs from my back, from my shoulders, making sure I've good flexibility in the body. And then I'll work on my sit-ups. I'll do plank because it's all about core. You don't want loose hips. Sean seen me in the first one. My hips were up and down like a... But the, the, the important thing is if you have good core strength, you develop a better run. You, you, you can maintain better gait through, throughout the run. So 
stop running on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a sold now. You have a sold now. There's a couple of different things you could definitely do on that one. Um, Friday. Friday. Nobody likes doing anything on a Friday. Most people organize after work things on a Friday. Most people get shopping on a Friday. Most yep. people do this. What are you not doing on Friday? Running. You're not doing anything. Enjoy oh. your night off. Friday is rest day. It's the day before the weekend when you're going to do two of your biggest runs. The weekend is where the majority of people have most of their time. Friday is your night to go, do you know what? This was a good week. This is our night to have a glass of whatever. Not more than two because you're going to be running the next day. Um, and this is my night to get a takeaway. This is my night in with the kids. We're going to go to the cinema. And Friday is you're not being selfish night. Friday is the night you consider everyone else is allowing you to do all the training that you're doing or allowing yourself to give yourself a pat on the back for all the effort you put in over the week. If you don't give yourself those little rewards or remember the team around you who are letting you do the marathon or be inclusive with them on something, you have to bring people along over long periods of training and time. And if you're doing that on a Friday night and you're setting aside that time, they will gladly let you go out then on Saturday morning and Sunday morning to get your longer runs in. I'm, I'm feeling very selfish right now, but we've only ran Tuesday and Wednesday so far this week, and I'm feeling like I need to do a lot more, Eric. Yeah, well, you've done yoga on Monday. Okay. Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, sorry, Tuesday was an easy run. Wednesday, now we're in week one, you know, these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wednesday's right. your intervals. Thursday, do something else for 45 minutes. Friday, rest day. Saturday, Sunday. Hold on to your hats. Saturday. <laughs> You were asking me about hills. Yes. So some people like to do varied running training on a Saturday. So what do you mean by varied? It can be fartlek. It can be zone two into zone three, back to zone two, you know, varying paces, speeds, and relative effort. Or what I like to do is not everyone lives near the Phoenix Park, but this is an example. The Phoenix Park has a couple of hills in it. It also has a couple of flats in it. Yes. What I like to do is go to the said Phoenix Park and rather than thinking about changing the effort, I keep the same pace, whether it's a hill or not a hill. And I'll do my 10K or 11K. I'm getting hill runs in. I'm getting running variation in. I'm getting zone differences in. So pick a hilly place and go for your run. When you look at week one, a Saturday, you're looking at about 45 minutes of a varied effort. You Mm want to be flirting with each of the zones. For me, it's hills. There's hills in the marathon, so get used to them. Use it as your very training because some parts of your run are going to be downhill, some are going to be flat, some are going to be uphill. My little tips for running downhill, lengthen your stride. Let the body fall down. Tip the chin forward, lean forward. Let yourself come down the hill. Don't be trying to stop it because you put pressure on the knees. When you're going up the far side, a lot of people think they need to lengthen their stride and up the hill short quick steps so shorten the length of your stride take the steps quicker and it tends to be a similar not the same but a a lower effort than some people trying to grind up the hills essentially um so it's just a little tip for running up the hills to try and maintain effort your heart rate will rise you're going up a hill but not to 190, it might go up to the 160. And then that's just two little tips for for how to take on the hills. And that's always my Saturday, the length of time. Some of the sessions will vary, but I try to get myself into the hills because I hate hills. So that's Saturday. Sunday, long run. So you just make it like a religion. It's Sunday, your mass is at least an hour. It's 75 minutes, it's 90 minutes. It goes into two hours. It goes into the first two hours of zone two. The last 45 minutes is zone three. You're teaching yourself what happens after zone two. The heart rate loses the run of itself. So now I'm going to run in zone three. So you progress that over the 16 weeks up to the tapering point. Um, But that's what Sunday always, 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 always is the long run. You are talking a lot of progression there, but you're mentioning time a lot. Um, Is all your progressions time? Yeah. It's time. You always, you always have time and progressions on. Yeah. So when 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 it comes to long run, it's all about time. It's all about time because 
there's no point putting a distance on it. There's no point right. putting a pace on it. If you're going with heart rate, it's all about just time in zones. So if you can stay in your zone two, you're going to progress. It'll start at an eight minute kilometer. But by the time you're eight weeks in, you're going to be running five thirties in zone two. So you're two hours in. This is naturally goes up there. Is going to get. It never gets easier. You just get faster. Do you cap it? So one of the things I'd hear about long runs, or, or yeah, long run in general, is that when you get past a certain point, so some people say it's 20 miles, some people say it's two and a half hours, and I'm assuming it's more for time for yourself, and maybe the two and a half hour, maybe not. Do you find you, you build just that point on, on a long run Sunday and there's no point in going any longer than, than that time? Or would you build towards that two and a half hours to two week? We turned the so, 16 and pull back, or what What way would, would you do it with the heart rate training? So, here's an example of what I'm looking at um, from one of my previous ones. Week seven, uh, week 11, day seven. So, or f- four, five weeks so, out. Yeah, five weeks out on a Sunday. I spent 150 minutes in zone two, and then zone mm-hmm. three or marathon pace for 30 minutes after you've tired yourself. The three hour run. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And I and that is pretty much pretty Biggest. much the pinnacle. From 11 weeks, we start to trend down. Next question, I suppose tapering thoughts. That's 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 five weeks out. Would you go with a five week taper? Uh it's not necessary. It is a taper, but like in week it's 12, a gradual reduction you're still going yeah. really high like you're going from like from yeah. three hours down to two and a half hours but it's still yeah, yeah you're going from from that then down to well there's still 180 minutes it's still week 12 it's just slightly different you reduce your zone two time you're still going for a three hour but you increase your zone three time so that's probably that's it's probably going up then to week 13 yeah. or so yeah yeah week 13, so 13 week 14 week 13 again it's 90 minutes zone two 60 minutes on three and then it should be into the three week taper i'll just double check yeah it's into a taper so the zone two comes down but the zone three stays the same and into week 15 you're looking at 10 minutes zone two 50 minutes marathon pace 10 minutes zone two so week 11 12 you should be peaking your longest runs you should be increasing your zone two after you do your two hours zone two, it's 30 minutes, 45 minutes on three. You lower your zone two to bring up your zone three, if that's making sense. So for every mm. minute you're taking off until the last two weeks. It's, it's still pretty hard. It's, it's not easier than, like, I know you're saying the longest 11 or 12. It's a, it's a little bit different to what you normally do distance because your zone three is increasing, your zone two is incre- decreasing. I have you're this right. It's it, it, it's Yeah, you're covering more ground. You're actually, your distance to go with the old school method or my method and not my method, but um, you're still going, you're, you're covering more ground. So it's actually going up in distance, not time then. Time's actually decreasing somehow, but distance is increasing yeah. until week 13, 14 still, is it? Or yeah, what week it 13, then? it'll start to decrease. So yeah, week 12, you're, you're, you're up around, like it's week 12, 13, you're just changing how fast you're running you're still doing 180 minutes and 12 13 Mm. you're still doing your three hours so your week 13 your week 13 probably will be your longest run uh, because you're spending the most time in zone three but the most important thing is you're doing your zone three on tired legs you'll have done your one hour zone two and or your 90 minutes zone two and then you're going for your zone three at 60 minutes or whatever you know you're 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 building yourself up but that's that's how I do it because yeah. it, it's it's training you for crossing that halfway point, l- losing control of the heart rate as you go through. So you're giving yourself tired legs. You're increasing the pace, and that's when you're beginning to know. It's confidence. It's it's confidence yeah. to know. Well, Jesus, I done two hours and then I ran an hour at the pace while I was tired. You're giving yourself the realistic time four weeks out so you know this i'm on for this i have this in the legs I've done the training i've done the long run when you see three hours on your watch in the marathon you're like i had done this done yeah. you know 
it's only another hour to go it's only another 20 minutes to go it's only another five minutes to go whatever whatever the case may be so it's that's that's pretty much how it should progress so week one you're looking at an hour 75 minutes week 12 11 12 13 they're they're big runs um, and that's what you do in between to get to them stages probably add 10 minutes every week i'm just trying to give some advice yeah to you to make your own plans yeah um, I suppose we're, we're hitting nearly 60 minutes apart in this podcast. So what I'm going to do is quick fire uh, on just a couple of different topics um, around marathon training at 16 weeks. Just throw a couple of thoughts on them. Um, I suppose realistic times to train would depend on the person. Were you more morning, even doesn't matter. I suppose the exception of the long run on the Sunday morning, because you want to kind of mimic that with the, the double marathon itself with the long run. And as well as that, it really answers the question then uh, in terms of nutrition, what should you eat before a race and say, hey, hey, on week 11, you, you had a particular type of breakfast for, for doing those three hours and you felt good. I suppose that's the same week 12, 13, 14. Um, any thoughts on nutrition breakfast for the long run? Um, or nutrition during the run? For, for the longer runs only now. Yeah, something we've discussed in many different episodes. Breakfast beforehand, I like a little bit of porridge, something light. Um, you'll have had your big meal the night before or two days before because you can up in the carbs coming into it and um, don't test anything on marathon day make sure you're testing through your training periods you don't want to find out you get a dose of the squits on the marathon day um, and that's it just work yourself with water educate yourself on salt tabs don't do what i did take one too early and end up peeing a little bit of blood i know that's disgusting but it happens so all of these things figure out week 11 12 13 don't figure it out on marathon day uh, mini tapers so what i've done before is um after three four weeks of long run just go back this is for a quick second so it's easier for me to explain um i will have done let's let's say i'm gonna say uh long run being 12 kilometers week one or 13, 14 kilometers week two 16 week three uh week four might drop down to 12 just get a bit of recovery in but then week five might get that extra jump back up to 16 or 18 and then you go 20, 22, drop back down a bit and then build it up there. Um, just because of distance, and it's easier for me to go, okay, week 14 or week 13, uh, week 14, more likely for me with, with the tapering, uh, would be getting that longest run in, the, the 30 odd K, and then working my way back towards week one for those long runs. Because in my opinion, the, the longer run is the most important run the, uh, of the week. Um, is that the same with heart rate training or is the recovery yeah. kind of thing? Do you do taper weeks, mini tapers, or do you just keep constantly build? Uh, no, no, it's just a constant build. Constant uh, build. There's no, there's no real taper Pull back and go when forward. you're doing it. Yeah, you're trying to build to a peak. So it's the taper really is only a small drop on the peak. And that's what you're trying to do. You're, you're trying to just climb a mountain then you kind of go down the mountain a little bit before race day so that you can go above the mountain. You know, you, you, your, your race day should be your peak. It mm -hmm. should be your best effort. And it's actually the easiest effort because you're rested, which is important to remember. And that's why you taper. You build the carbs, you store the glycogen, you do your best effort rested. You've done all your other runs tired. So that's why most people who stick, who, and this is why I say consistency is king. You stick to consistency. The marathon is a victory lap. That's all it is. Mm. Now, consistency is key. Really pushes on the very next question. Uh, something went wrong. Your sister went and got married in a different country, whatever it is. You, you've you messed up a week. Um, do you go back a week? Do you go forward a week? What way do, would, would, you, would you tackle it? You're not going to lose the fitness you've built in a week. Kick on. Would you skip the week and move on? Never try, and training, cause... never, never try and catch up on a training day. Agreed. Um, if you've done 10 weeks and your sister's getting married in the 11th week, we'll see you in week 12. Yeah. Okay. It's like I done a, I done a marathon in four weeks training. If you've done 11 weeks and you miss a week, you are going to be substantially fitter. You actually, your body might've even needed that break. Mm. Never, ever. Okay. If you skipped Wednesday's intervals and you didn't want to cross train on the Thursday, absolutely get the intervals in don't do the cross train element but if you miss stuff because say saturday you just can't get out of what you have to do on saturday see you for the long run on sunday see you for the yoga on monday and let's get into the next week have you i suppose at the top of breaks there have you ever had and you, you obviously have 
at some stage you, you, you're talking just a long prelude to this question um you're you're contemplating the run you think you feel tired you're like oh i don't know about this one you eventually put the runners on you went out you had a great run so my next question is listen to your body when do you take that break or when is the case of you're not really feeling up to it? when is the i suppose the phantom niggles like I always before a big run or a big race you're like oh my calf is going my quad is going and it's just your head messing with you and it's just that day to go but also sometimes it's like you you, you do need to rest I actually don't know the answer to this one but do, 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 have you found a balance in that fine line as someone said something that's resonated with you in that one yeah I don't make any decisions less than 7k in that's a good way putting it because sometimes yeah. a couple of K in it, it, it can be pretty hard. When a seven yeah. K, if you're not feeling it, then you're done. You're more likely to injure yourself. Yeah, and if you're if you are in that much pain, less than seven K, the decision's already made. Right. But if you're just being soft, figure it out after seven kilometers. So figure if it it's on the plan, do it. Kilometers. Yeah, I find I actually don't settle into any run less than five six kilometers. It's only then I actually start to relax and enjoy it. So. I'll constantly be making every excuse. Then after six kilometers, like I like to run. <laughs> so um, just yeah, don't don't, especially when it comes to marathon, don't injure yourself. But if it's mm. sore enough, you'll know in the first hundred meters. You won't be figuring it out. Um, but you know if you're going on an hour long run, do thirty at least. You know, figure yeah. it out if it's just mental or are you actually feeling a lot of pain? But, don't don't uh, train your pain. This comes with a big asterisk there's a difference between mental softness and actual physical pain. You will know the difference. It's very clear. Don't be stupid and run through pain. Um, but you can run through mental softness. Uh, 100% agreed. I think, I think the last point there, I have anyway, unless you've got something else that was well, Eric, I think something that's very overlooked in marathon training. It's something that's very easy. The best thing you can do to get, to, in my mind, fitter, stronger, make right decisions. So when you are feeling like not feeling up for a run, one of the things that's going to get you out there for that run is how you slept. Like, if you're not yeah. getting good quality sleep, if you're only getting four or five hours a night, you're getting broken sleep and everything else, forget about it. You're going to make those bad decisions, whether it's food choices or just not feeling up for it and, oh, I'll do it later because I'm too tired. Then that schedule plan, that schedule run, no matter what time it is, maybe it's six o'clock in the evening, you, you work a nine to five and you can't do early mornings. Like, I want to run at six. And you're like, oh, I'm feeling too tired. And you get some food me first. Ah, I need to lie down on the couch for a half hour, get a mini nap. Ah, just watch this one episode or this one YouTube video. Next thing you know, it's 9, 10 o'clock and you need a good night's sleep for getting up next day. And you've missed that session all because you're up the night before, scrolling through Instagram, whatever it is, you couldn't get a nice sleep. I know there's some legit reasons, but a lot of time is not prioritizing getting at least that, that seven hours a night. Yeah, no, sleep is vital. Recovery is king. You have to treat your sleep as one of the most important parts nutrition training sleep recovery you know like they're they're, they're all vital for maintaining that consistency that's it you got 16 weeks to go get yeah. on it <laughs> we're sorry it took so long but we got 16 questions on the 16 week marathon plan and uh, we thought we'd just give this one a little bit extra time i'm sorry if people are getting a little bit bored listening to this one but there are <laughs> 16 people who are very much taking notes on this episode so it's it's great when people reach out to us sorry we we went as in-depth as we could because we aren't giving out training plans anymore but we hope people take a good bit from this and, and can start to build their own plans and we'll see them out on the half marathon on the 23rd of september and we'll see them on marathon day on the bank holiday weekend in october i got nothing else to add to this week's episode of the angry Monday podcast we've definitely had a fair bit in that one that's it from myself and Eric. Take care. Bye.